I don't wanna be Just someone that's new I speak my mind so free So you could hear the truth Yeah, I know that we all have fear Hello guys and welcome back to the podcast This is The Truth For Youth with Micah Murphy Today guys, we're gonna be talking about Living a life that's recommendable What do I mean by that? Well, I was listening to uh, this conversation and an individual said, you know what, we need to live a life that is recommendable. And I started thinking about that and what he was talking about. And he, he was really talking about it more from a business standpoint of, you know what, you need to have a life that others either see value in or they appreciate or that they just have a respect for. And, and, to the extent where they would actually recommend you or your business or your service. Um, and I started thinking, man, that is, that is a great saying to live by. If you really were to live with that thought of, is my life recommendable? In other words, is my life a life of integrity or a life of value, a life of purpose, a life of honesty? Because when you think about it, even from a business standpoint, you know, we want to work with someone or whether it buy a product or, you know, buy a service from them that they're going to treat us right. You know, they're someone of value. They're, they're a top rated, you know, company or individual. You know, for me anyways, when I go to buy a product, uh, and, and I do a lot of my shopping on Amazon these days, but when I go to buy a product, one of the first things that I do is I look at the reviews. I want to see what's the feedback. What are the reviews? Are other people recommending this particular product or service? I mean, that's pretty much everything that I buy, even if it's not on Amazon. I mean, I'm trying to research if it's a type of car, if it's, you know, even a little little part that I need to fix something that's broken, what, you know, protein, anything. I mean, literally anything and everything I'm, I'm trying to research what do other people say? And I really like to go to the negative feedback because I feel like I get a lot of value out of reading the negative comments and the negative feedback um, to see what did the, you know, what was it? Was it just something like fluke? Was it, you know, maybe something out of their control, something about shipping maybe or damaged product or something that may be out of the control of, of that individual seller or that company or that product that wasn't necessarily that product's fault. So anyways... Um, I'm looking for that. Now, let me, let me have a little side note here. If you find something that has 100% positive feedback, positive results, there's probably something wrong. <laughs> you know, that, you probably should be a little leery because that means either that product or that seller or whatever is really, really new. There's not enough reviews or it may be all false, fake reviews, you know, because you just can't please everybody, okay? So there's going to be some negative in there, and that's why I like to go and look at that negative. But by and large, I want to see that a lot of people recommend it. Now, that's one thing to get a recommendation from somebody that, you know, I don't have a clue who pretty much all those people are. But think about when we get something recommended by a friend, or by a family member, then it has a lot more value, right? Like, because we know that person, we know it's an honest review, it's an honest recommendation, because you do have to be kind of a little careful, right? If people are recommending, it's like, okay, what are you getting out of it? Are you benefiting? Are you an affiliate partner, meaning you're getting some type of kickback, right? Or commission or something, you know, just like if you were to go to buy a car, right? You know, we all are uh, a little skeptical of, of car salesmen, Not, nothing wrong with car salesmen, but a lot of us go in there and we think, hey, they're going to try to sell us on a car, right? Because they're getting a commission. That's how they earn a living. And so it's hard to, to really hear them for what they have to say a lot of times because we know that they may be telling us stuff that we want to hear just to get at the sell, okay? So anyways, going back to to uh, those recommendations, you know, we, we like to get things recommended to us by people that we know and people that we trust. Um, in fact, there was a study done um, by Nelson Publishing, and again, this was a completely secular business marketing survey that was done, and it showed that 92% of the people 
reported that a positive recommendation from a friend, a family member, or someone that they trusted was the biggest influence on whether they bought a product or service. I'm telling you, it has lots of value. And you, you yourself probably can think back, you know, whether it be a pair of shoes or maybe it's a car or maybe it's a class or a book or, or I don't know, any, anything, right? You probably asked some friends or people that you knew what their advice was. Maybe it's even dating. Hey, what do you think about such and such? Should I date this person? Um, because maybe they have some inside scoop or they have a knowledge or, or whatever. So you, you probably take their opinion to have more weight, right? You, you respect that. Um, now, going back to that, that particular survey that I just mentioned, so if 92% said that, yes, yeah, someone that they trusted, family member, that was the largest influence, versus only about 50% of the people trusted advertisement, just general advertisement. Um, and that number skewed a lot depending on what type of advertisement. So it was as low as 40, and I think it even went up to almost 60% based on the particular type of advertising. So about 50% trusted the advertisement versus 92 from someone that they know and trust. Now, what the heck does all this have to do with Christianity? Because that is what this podcast is all about, right? The truth, Christianity, Christian values. Again, when I heard this conversation talking about living a recommendable life, it just dawned on me, man. It just hit me like, gosh, that is a, that is a great thing for us as Christians to be living by. Again, this was a secular conversation. But I thought, man, how important is it for us as Christians to live a life that's recommendable? And again, this, this applies to every aspect of our life. I mean, hopefully you want to have a life that others recommend. And, and students, I get it. You probably aren't thinking really far ahead in your future. I know I wasn't, but I hope you do. I hope you start thinking about down the road, more of that long-term vision. You're thinking about, hopefully, colleges that you're wanting to get accepted into or jobs or careers something way down the road, you're hopefully thinking far enough in advance that you can position yourself now to make good decisions so that you can be recommended. Because what you're doing right now is you're laying the groundwork. You're laying a foundation. You are creating a life, and whether that life is recommendable or not, that depends on you know your words and your actions and things that you're doing currently. And I know that right now you don't really think about that. But guess what? The reality is that you, yourself, you are a personal brand. And that's weird to kind of think about maybe or to say you may have never thought about it that way, but you are. You're a brand. You're kind of a business. You're, you're the business of yourself. And you're going to be always trying to sell your brand, so to speak, uh, to some extent, because you're going to be, again, applying for colleges, maybe scholarships, uh, jobs, careers, uh, maybe even a, that girlfriend or that boyfriend. You're constantly going to be having to sell yourself. So what is your brand saying? What is it showing for yourself? And here's the thing. Now, it's a lot different than when I was younger, okay? We have social media that Man, if you post something, you put something out there on the internet, it's out there. And a lot of people say, oh, I can delete it. No, it's still out there in cyberspace. And I think you know, you can see in the media how constantly things are being brought up that someone did or said in the past that was recorded or tweeted or posted or whatever. And now it's being brought back up and it haunts them. We are living in a social media world where we are posting stuff like crazy. And so I hope today that you're thinking a little bit more long term because the stuff that you're posting, you may not think too much about it because, oh, I was just having fun. It was just us. I was a teenager, whatever. But someday, something that you're posting today may come back and haunt you. It may come back and bite you because you weren't thinking far enough down the road to see how is that impacting you as a brand. 
you as an individual. Um, Jeff Bezos, who the founder of Amazon, just in case you've been living under a rock, okay? Jeff Bezos says this. He says, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Think about that for a minute. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. What are people saying about you when you're not around? What's the conversation like? Do they say good things about you? Are they saying bad things about you? I mean, you know, a lot of times we don't really know, right? Because we're not there. Maybe sometimes we get uh, maybe a, a third party that will tell us because they were in that conversation. They overheard, you know, what was being said. But for the most part, we don't really know. And you need to be thinking about that. Like, what is your brand? Because here's the thing. What we're posting on social media or, or the words that we're saying or the actions that we're doing, there's probably two different reactions, okay? You're probably getting some people that maybe they don't know you, okay? Maybe all they've seen is stuff that you've posted because they don't know you personally. They've just, they see your posts on social media, um, or maybe they've seen you from a distance. So maybe they overhear something or they see some of your actions or they've heard some of your actions from somebody else or they've seen your posts. Okay, so from that, they're going to draw an assumption about you. They're going to draw some kind of conclusion. They're, maybe it's a judgment. I don't know, but they're going to, they have to process that and come up with something in order to associate you with that, okay? So they're, they're making an assumption about you. Now, the other one would be that someone that really knows you, okay? They know you, they spend time with you, they hear your, you know, they hear you speaking often, they, they're in conversations with you, they see your, a lot more of your actions and all your posts or whatever. Now, that person is obviously has an opinion about you, an assumption about you as well, and it's probably a lot more accurate. But bottom line is, people are making assumptions and they're having an opinion about you. Now, I don't, I don't want you to go out and think, oh my gosh, I've got to worry about what everybody thinks about me, because that's not the case. But what you do need to realize is that what you're doing and what you're saying, it, it's painting a picture for somebody. It's, it's actions and words that others are making an assumption about who you are, maybe what you believe and how you live. And we need to be cautious. We need to be careful about the things that we say and especially about the things that we post because when we post something on social media, it's there. And I know I've seen so many posts from, from teenagers that I'm thinking, boy, <laughs> they're probably going to regret that post one day. Um, it's probably going to come back. You know, if a future employer is, is digging through their social media, they probably not going to get hired based on that post. And I know that's not on the, the forefront of your mind when you're making that post, when you're, when you're doing that. You're just being fun, being a teenager. But again, that stuff is communicating to others about who you are and what you believe. And, and what kind of person you are. And again, I'm tying this all back into your Christian faith. You know, I know it's weird that we're talking about brand and business and what in the world does that have to do with our spiritual life? Guys, there's so many parallels to all that we've been talking about to this, to your spiritual walk. When people see you, what is your brand? What does that communicate? Does it say that you're a follower of Jesus? Or does it say that people have no idea? Or does it say that you're definitely not a follower of Jesus because of the words that you use, the posts that you make, the conversations that you have, the actions that you're doing, whatever? And I think we need to be very cautious about that. You know, we, we want, at least I think anyways, because I want people to recommend me as either a youth pastor or whatever, you know, a good friend, someone that, that people can trust, that I'm honest, that, you know, I'm hardworking, whatever it is, I hope that people would recommend that. 
And I hope you too are striving for others to recommend you. Look, I get asked all the time by students for something called a letter of recommendation. That comes when students are usually their senior year and they're graduating and they need scholarships or they're applying for scholarships and almost all of them require some letters of recommendation. Why does this student deserve this particular scholarship? Also, entrances into universities and colleges, a lot of times they want letters of recommendations. So I'll write those for students. Also, internships. Perhaps they want to be camp counselors. Perhaps they're um, needing a job. And so they want to know what, you know, what uh, kind of life extracurricular activities did they do, were they involved in? And sometimes they want, you know, a reference like a pastor, a youth pastor. So I do this often. Now, I will say some of those letters of recommendations are a whole lot easier to write than others. You know, kids that have been super active in the youth group and people I can depend on and have kind of been leaders, man, those recommendation letters are easy and I love writing them. Then I get them every once in a while from people that not very active, didn't really do a whole lot, didn't really help much, not real sure about their character, and I'm not going to lie I'm not going to dog them out, but I'm not going to lie either. So I'm trying to find certain strengths. And there have been times when I have said, this is something that you do need to realize. They're not as reliable. However, they have strengths in these other areas. You know, I try to do my best. But bottom line is, at some point, you're probably going to want someone to recommend you for something. And I I want your whole life, like every aspect of your life, I want it to be where it's recommendable, you know, your hard work, your integrity, your, your, you know, you're dependable, uh, you're kind, you're considerate, every aspect of your life, but especially your spiritual aspect. You know, if you think about your spiritual life, would others recommend Christianity based on you, based on your brand? When they hear you talk, when they watch you, and they're not a Christian, what do they think? What is your life representing? What are your posts on social media? What are they representing? Would people say, oh yeah, that, that's a Christian? Or, oh, that's what Christianity is like, because that's what they say and they do. I don't know. You know, I hope, I hope and I pray that when people see that, that, that they realize, yeah, that, that is a good representation of Christianity. That is recommendable that others, you know, see that and, and act on that. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 16, uh, this is what it says. In the same way, you should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. We are to be a light. That's the way our life is supposed to look like. You know, you hear it all the time, how our lives are supposed to be witnesses. You know, what does that really mean? Well, you may not have every opportunity to sit down and talk to to people about who Jesus is, right, and share Jesus with them. But your life is always communicating that, right? Like how you live, how you act, how you treat others. So if your life is that living example, that living witness, that's what this passage is saying. You should be a light, right? You you should be this bright light that shines for Christ and live so that others see those good things. And not that we're, you know, have to do all these good things and check them off a list so that we can get into heaven. That's not what it is. It's our faith in Jesus that should make us at least We should want to do good things because of our faith in Jesus, right? So there should be some good deeds. There should be those fruits that we've talked about in previous podcasts. Like, what is the fruit? What, you know, what kind of results? What kind of things can people see and say, you know what? That is a Christian. So hopefully there's some good deeds and there's some good things that people see. And then what do they do? They're not praising you. They're praising who? They're praising God. They're praising Jesus. Because of that, 
That's living a life that is recommendable with a Christian viewpoint, right? If we're going to be followers of Christ, that's what we need to be doing. I'm going to leave us with uh, three little kind of takeaways. Here, here's three little pieces of advice that, that I think we should uh, go about future thinking and, and applying this to kind of building your personal brand when we're thinking about living a life that's recommendable to others. The first one is you need to think before you act. Think before you act. And this can be how you speak. You know, your actions, maybe how you react to, to other people's actions or words, and also maybe how you're posting or what you're about to post on social media. Think before you do it. Sometimes we don't think things through and we do th- and post stuff that we regret later. So if you think about it, you know, how is this behavior? Could this come back and bite me later? Uh, what is this saying about me as a Christian? How are people going to take this? Just be cautious, okay? That's really what I'm saying on this one, okay? Be cautious about what you're doing and and especially posting, okay? Second one, walk your talk. Walk your talk. If you're claiming to be a follower of Jesus, then you better walk it, okay? So you're talking the game, and we know what we call people that walk differently than they talk. We call those hypocrites. And yes, we're all hypocrites to some extent because we're just, you know, we're not perfect. We're going to mess up. But you know the difference between the true hypocrites that are always saying one thing and doing something else versus those that have said some things and they mess up or they, you know, made a mistake or they forgot about something or whatever. Um, But there's a big distinction between those two. So if you're going to claim to be a follower of Christ, then you need to be walking that. And that needs to show in your actions and in your words um, and in your posts, right? Because because people can can sniff out a fake real quick. So don't make your brand a fake by trying to portray being somebody that you're not. You know, you need to be authentic. So walk your talk. And the third one is what we talked about in our last podcast, self-evaluate, right? Just like we talked about last week, sometimes we get caught up and we're not really paying attention and, and we're just kind of going with the flow of life, and we haven't really sat back and evaluated. So maybe every once in a while you need to pull back and you need to evaluate, how am I talking? You know, what has my language been like? Am I loving others? Am I loving Jesus? What have my posts been like? Maybe you need to go back and review some of your past posts, you know, on social media. Oh, gosh, you know, this is the things I've been posting. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's really a good move for my personal brand, right? The brand for Christ, so evaluate those. You know, are you progressing? Are you hopefully as a Christian, you're, you're progressing in your faith and your growth as a Christ follower? And then if you need to change something, you know, you need to make the change. That's what the self-evaluation is for. Make the change, pivot, and make a move um, in the right direction. You know, guys, the, the, the main thing, again, you know, my passion is to try to help students make good decisions and if you're getting this and you're way down the road and you're 30 and 40, it's not that it's too late, but you've probably already done a lot of damage that it's, it's going to be harder to correct. Hopefully, you teenagers are listening to this now and you're grasping this concept of building a brand, of building a recommendable life, you know, that others can recommend you. Others can see this. I mean, again, for your careers, for your future, you know, relationships, and especially for your your relationship with Christ, be a person that has a recommendable life. I know that's what I strive for, and I hope you strive to do the same. Guys, thanks again for listening to the podcast, and I'm going to ask you again, if you're finding value in these, please share them. Please go on and give them a rate, uh, review. You know, again, just like we talked about in the beginning of this podcast, feedback and reviews are big. I like them. I'll I check them out before I dive into something. So if you're leaving positive reviews, then others will see and say, okay, well, you know, others are recommending this podcast. So there may, must be something of value. So I'm asking you, if you're finding value, then, then recommend this podcast to others and leave a review. Guys, uh, I really do appreciate it. I love you. I'm here for you. And we'll catch you in the next podcast. Bye-bye.
I don't wanna be just someone that's new I speak my mind so free so you could hear the truth Yeah, I know that we all have